Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you are. We are glad that you are with us. We wish to welcome you to the daily Bible study for the Sea Line Church of Christ. If you have been to our building, you know where we are. If, on the other hand, you are joining us from someplace else in the world or someplace else in the Philippines, we are located in the city of Silang, Cavite, Philippines, on Algonaldo Highway or the bypass at kilometer 42. This makes us about 30, kilometer, 30 miles or 50 kilometers south of downtown Manila. We are glad that you are with us, and we hope that our study of God's word is of benefit to you. As always, we'll start with prayer request. So, Epi, would you give us a prayer today, please? Right, sir. Uh, Father God, we gather here today under your care and protection. Thank you for the loving and kindness that never fail us. We thank you for those with us that you would guide our thoughts and action to bring you glory, strengthen us, and fill us with your peace. Uh, we're asking, Lord, for the continuous, for the effective communication of Sir Fred's wife and we pray for the we pray for the safety of the sister of Rochelle and good health and thanksgiving and blessing for their every day and thanksgiving for all the blessing, wisdom and knowledge for the son of Senesa and reviewer for let examination and safety travels for his nephew and brothers way back to Sambales and uh Continuous healing of Pearly's mother and good health for all of them. And thanksgiving for thanksgiving for all blessing, praying for good health, wisdom, guidance, and protection for all of them for Sister Marcel and for my for Vanessa. Thanks, thankful and praying for blessing. And we receive every day good health, protection, wisdom, and, and enlightenment for each of all of them and from Sister Giselle is praying for himself to give guidance, patience, and to protect them, protect him for the people who are doing not good and protection for his family and to his co-worker and more blessing. And from the Silang Church of Christ, prayers for the families affected by storm and 50 plus killed in the Batangas and for my and for my uh, prayer request is thanksgiving for the guidance of my family and for me. Amen. Amen. Um, we are still studying about Boaz. So tell me what has struck you so far about the character of Boaz. Giselle? Uh, sir, can I call a friend because I don't know, sir? Vanessa? Uh, uh, he's being generosity to his servant, sir, and to his wife, Ruth. She's not his wife yet. <laughs> Boas. She's what? Uh, the, uh, that's uh, Boas. She, go yeah, ahead. He's being generosity to his servant, and even though he's a wealthy man, uh, he is gener generous to his servant and God fearing. Okay, Vanessa. Um, he is, yes, he is a gen generous man, a protector, and a good good leader, sir. He's looking uh, for the welfare of his servant, sir. Okay. Rochelle? Uh, Boaz uh, showing his respect to everyone and honest in all things and humble at all times. Okay. Furley? Uh, for being for being a generous man and a God fearing man, sir. Okay, We're, we'll come up with something where he's going to be tempted shortly. 
uh, Francis. Even if he's wealthy, he's humble and generous. Okay. Chris. He's a very observant person. Okay. Fred. Uh, he's part of the uh, Israelite lineage. He is. Okay. Epi, you missed, you were, yeah, Epi, do you have anything for us? Sir, I have a search in Google. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll come back. Bo Boas is, uh, Go ahead. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, Boas, Boas is known for his generosity and adherence to the law, which is demonstrated by his kindness to Ruth. Okay. Maricel. Boas is a worthy man, worthy man, and have a close relationship. Close relationship. With whom? Okay. So what we've studied is, yes, he's a God-fearing man. And we've also looked at the fact that uh, his generosity continued throughout the harvest. Um, was Boaz afraid to work? No. Let's take a look at Ruth chapter 3, verse 2. Ruth chapter 3, verse 2. Giselle? Ruth chapter 3, verse 2. Yes, please. Is not Boaz our relative with, with whose young woman you were? See, he is win, winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Okay. So did he participate in the work, the winnowing, if you will? Yes. Yes. Uh, which means that even though he was wealthy, he participated in the work as well. He wasn't standing around watching other people do the work. Um, let's uh, take a look at, at Ruth chapter 3 and verse 7. Ruth chapter 3 and verse 7. Sanessa? You're muted. Verse 7, And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of green. Keep going. Then she came, then she came softly and uncovered his feet and lay down. Okay, so it's not a hypothesis for us to say that he indulged in drink. It says that he did. And this caused him to go to sleep. Um, what we're going to see is this is going to be and a surprise started. for him. Say it again. Go ahead, Sanessa. What'd you say? <laughs> Maybe he starts. <laughs> okay, say it again. I missed it. Maybe he starts there. That's why he laid down. Okay, maybe he's tired. Uh, he's getting ready to get a surprise. Uh, chapter 3, verse 8, please, Vanessa. In Ruth, chapter 3, verse 8 says, At midnight, the man was started and turned over, and behold, a woman lay at his Okay, so how do you think this came off to him? He went to bed, he went to sleep, and he woke up, and there's a woman laying down at his feet. Do you think he was surprised? Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
What do you think, Fred? Oh, yeah. He just woke up and there's a woman here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where did you come from? <laughs> okay. Um, Ruth is going to make a request here. Let's take a look at verse 9. Verse 9, please, Rochelle. Verse 9, he said, Who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, your servant. Spread your wings over your servant, for you are a redeemer. Okay, so what do you think she's saying in verse 9? Uh, Rochelle? Ruth is, Ruth is a servant. Go ahead. Epi, you were trying to say something. Go ahead. Ruth is Boaz's servant. She's not. She's going to end up becoming his wife. But at this point, um, what we're going to see is that Boaz asked for his identity. In other words, who are you? What are you doing here? And Ruth maintained her humility and said what? I am your servant, Ruth. Now, what we see, if we will read chapter 2 and verse 12, chapter 2 and verse 12, Pearly. Chapter 2, verse 12. The Lord repay you for what you have done, and the full reward be given you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Okay, so what we see in chapter 2, verse 12, is that Ruth placed herself under the wings of whom? Oh. Well, Yahweh, right? And in chapter 3, verse 9, she places herself under the wings of whom? Ruth. Boaz, right? Boaz. Now, what we have to understand is she's I really using servant, poetic language here over your servant. that is, has its root in the blessings that we saw that Boaz had given her in chapter 2, verse 12. She was a Moabitess, a widow, and she's calling attention of a noted Hebrew to his responsibility. She's letting him know that he can now fulfill the promise that the oath or the blessing that he has called on her in chapter 2, verse 12, by becoming her kinsman, kinsman redeemer and providing her with the security of marriage. Uh, let's go to chapter 3, verse 10. Chapter 3, verse 10. And that'll be Francis, please. Then he said, Blessed you are, oh, blessed are you of the Lord, my daughter, for you have shown more kindness at the end than at the beginning, and that you did not go after young men, whether poor or rich. Okay. So there's a couple of things that take that are taking place here. Um, when we read chapter 3 and verse 10, what we see is that Ruth did not pursue younger men, right? Now, this is it's not difficult to imagine that if Ruth did not pursue younger men, then Boaz was not a young man. Therefore, there is some age difference. Also, Pay attention to how he addressed her. He referred to her as... How does he refer to her in chapter 3, verse 10? A daughter, sir. A daughter. So if he refers to her as his daughter, would, it, would that seem appropriate or proper if they were approximately the same age? Mm, no. No. So when I tell you that there is a, so there's some conclusions that we could draw from chapter 3, verse 10, is that he was not a young man. 
and Ruth did not pursue the younger men. And he referred to her as my daughter. So if you take these two in conclusion, and I tell you that there's an age gap, and that Boaz is an older man, more mature, that's easy to see, right? And he commends her for her behavior. Uh, verse 11, verse 11, please. Chris? And now, my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you. I will do for you all that you request. For all the people of my town know that you are a virtuous woman. A virtuous woman. By the way, so what does that tell us? You see, there are skeptics who say that there is some activity that occurred here that is not recorded. I will strongly disagree. And the reason I will strongly disagree is he refers to her as what? His daughter? A virtuous daughter. woman. His daughter. Virtuous woman. Yes, he, he did refer to her as my daughter, mm -hmm. but he, he, what we looking woman. at here is, go ahead. Worthy standard. Woman. Say worthy again. woman. Virtuous woman, right? A worthy woman. Yes. So that means that she was maintaining herself as a virtuous woman. Mm -hmm. All right. Verse 12, please, Fred. And now it is true that I am a redeemer. Yet there is a redeemer nearer than I. Okay. Now, Boaz responds to the request that's being made. Um, this story is really coming to an end. Still, there's a complication that has to be taken care of. And with all probability, Boaz has already looked into the aspects, the legality of this proposed marriage. Maybe, we don't know, Scripture doesn't tell us, maybe he anticipated her request. And he knew that Ruth, by her marriage into Elimelech's marriage and his family, was had someone who was more closely related. However, apparently she is younger and pretty, uh, and Boaz is going to do all that he can to see that the income, the outcome, the result would be what apparently they both wanted. Verse 13, please, Effie. Verse 13, uh, remain tonight in the morning if he will redeem you. Good, let him eat. But if he not willing to redeem you, then as the Lord lives, I will redeem you. Lie down until the morning. Okay, now there's a couple of things that happen here that I think are of significance, okay? Um, what instructions did he give her? Stay here until night. Um. Boaz acted responsibly because he didn't send her out in the middle of the night. He wants to protect her. However, to my way of thinking, it's evident that he would only touch her if she could be lawfully his wife. And secondary to that, he also protected the rights of the kinsman who was closer if the other relative wanted to redeem her, that was his right. However, if the nearer kinsman was not willing, Boaz is surely going to do. He's surely going to do so. He's surely going to redeem her. And he made a vow. He pledged. Uh, there would be no doubt that Boaz wanted the matter to be settled. Uh, verse 14, please. Verse 14. Uh, Maricel? Chris, we're in Ruth chapter 3. 14. Uh, 
Ruth chapter 3 verse 14. Also, she lay at his feet until evening, but a rose before one could recognize another. And choppy, Maricel, you're choppy. Try it again. Um, Ruth chapter 3. Verse 14. So she lay at his feet until the morning, but arose before one could recognize another. And he said, Let, none, let it not be known that the woman came to the threshing floor. Now, based on what we're reading in verse 13 and 14, did Boaz protect? Her decency, her the, her reputation for being a virtuous woman. Yes, he sent her out yes. before people would recognize her, right? Chris, good morning. Big Chris. We'll come back. Uh, hey, verse, go ahead, Chris. Uh, what verse are we? We're in Ruth chapter 3. Give us for uh, Ruth chapter three. Look on Ruth. Mind. Yes, the chapter book of three. Ruth chapter three. And yeah. uh, give us verse fifteen, please. Uh, it says here. He also said, "Bring me the shawl you are wearing and hold it out." When she did so, he poured into six measures of barley, of barley, and placed the bundle on her. Then he went back to town. Okay, so. He's giving her some barley. Now, we don't really know what the six measures were. Um, however, the measure, from what we can tell, was probably a C, S-E-A-H-C, uh, which would have been one-third of an epath, or more or less 10 pounds. So six Cs would weigh about 60 pounds. So let's take a look. If she's able to carry 60 pounds, more or less 30 kilos, how strong is she? Francis. She's strong. She's strong as a young yeah. woman. Yes. If I give you 30 kilos, how far can you carry it? Two meters. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, Francis? I can't walk. You can't walk? Two meters. Sorry, it's too heavy. It's too heavy? Yes. Okay, so what we can see is a couple of different things. She was strong, and he was a generous man. Um... Chapter 4, verses 1 through 12, we'll skip. Uh, he, actually, you know what? Let's just read through that, and I'll try to, I'll try to keep my mouth shut for a little bit. Uh, chapter 4, give us verse 1, Giselle. Chapter 4, verse 1. Ruth, chapter 4, verse 1. Now Boaz had gone up to the gate, and sat down there. And behold, the Redeemer of whom Boaz had spoken came by. So Boaz said, Turn aside, friend, sit down. And he turned aside and sat down. Okay, verse 2, please. Sinessa? Verse 2, and he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, sit down here. So they sat down. So they sat down. Okay. They sat down. Verse 3, please, Vanessa. And verse 3, then he said to the Redeemer, Redeemer Naomi, 
who has come back from the country of Moab, is selling the parcel of land that belong to our relative Elimelech. Okay. Very good. We've learned how to say his name, right? Elimelech. Verse 4, please. Rochelle. Verse 4, so I thought I would tell you of it and say, buy it in the presence of those sitting here and in the presence of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, redeem it. But if you will not, tell me that I may know, for there is no one besides you to redeem it. And I come after you. And he said, I will redeem it. Okay, so he's going to redeem the piece of property, right? That's what it looks like. He looks like he is interested in the property. Uh, verse 5, please, Furley. Verse 5, then Boaz said, The day you buy the field from the hand of Naomi, you also acquire Ruth, the, the Moabite, the widow of the dead, in in order to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance. So, in other words, not only are you going to get a piece of land, you're going to get a wife. Francis? Verse 7, please. Uh, verse 6, please. And the close related son, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I ruin my own inheritance. You redeem my right of redemption for yourself, for I cannot redeem it. Okay. So why why did he not want to redeem it? Because it will ruin his own inheritance. It, because there will be children involved, right? All right. Little Chris, uh, give us seven, please. Now this was the custom in former times in Israel concerning redeeming and exchanging. To confirm anything, one man took his sandal and gave it to the other. And this was a confirmation in Israel. Okay. In verse 8, please, Fred. So when the Redeemer... Redeemer said to Boaz, buy it for yourself. He drew off his sandal. Now, something interesting to think about. If this first closer kinsman had redeemed the property and had redeemed Ruth, would we have ever met Boaz in the Bible? Probably not. Epi. In verse 9, then Boaz said to the elders and all the people, You are witnesses this day that I have bought from the hand of Naomi all, all that belong to Elimelech and all that belong to Chilion and to Malo. Okay. Verse 10, please, Marisol. Verse 10, also wrote the Moabite widow of Adon. I have bought to be my wife, to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance, that the name up from among his brothers and from the gate of his native place. You are, witness, you are witnesses this day. Okay. Chris, Big Chris, verse 11, please. Chris? Yeah, get back, get back to me. Sorry. Say it again, please. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do the second verse. Um, I'm actually in the middle of the, uh, okay. doing something. No okay. problem. Uh, Giselle, verse eleven, please. 
and verse 11, Then all the people who are at the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your house like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. May you act waterly in Erafrat and be renowned in Bethlehem. Okay. In verse 12, please. Sanessa. First, verse 12, and may your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah, because of the offspring that the Lord will give you by this young woman. Okay, and uh, we'll go ahead and finish. We're looking for the happy ending, so let's take a look at verse 13. Sanessa? You're so Boaz took Ruth, and she became... Yes, sir. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife, and he went into her, and the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. Okay. So what do we see? Tell me. They live happily. Go ahead. They, they live happily ever they became, after. <laughs> they became husband and wife. <laughs> Now, it's a happy ending, sir. It's a happy ending, okay? Uh, she bore a son. We see that in verse 13. And we're also going to see that Boaz became part of the line of David. Okay, so now we're going to have some discussion questions and throw them out there. True or false? And give me your reasons. Actually, let me ask this another way. How did Boaz feel about the people of Moab? Maricel? Epi? Um. Go ahead, Marichal. Sir, he, he, he did not um, discriminate. Yeah, I... Go ahead, um, Marichal. Maybe Boaz did not discriminate, even if, even if, um, what, uh, Ruth is Moabite. Even if uh, Ruth is Moabite. Even if she was a Moabitess, right? Okay. It's... Um. Was Boaz wealthy? Yes, he is. Okay. But how did he treat other people? Respectful and fair. Showing his respect to everyone. Okay. Fred? He's kind. Go ahead, Epi. Say it again. He's kind, sir. He's kind. Fred? With respect and with generosity. With respect and generosity. Uh, Sanessa? Sanessa? Yes, sir. Your answer also. Respect with... Uh, generous with respect to the okay. people. All right. Giselle? Uh, he is kind, sir. He's kind? Okay. Vanessa? But yes, this kind and this res with respect. Okay. And it's uh, not only commanding, he's was, helping them. Was Boaz aware of things that were going on around him? Everything. Say it again, Vanessa. He knows everything, sir, and he's helping them. Okay. Um, not only managing. Okay. What do you think, Francis? What was the question, sir? Was Boaz aware of things that were going on around him? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, 
was Boaz hoping that the nearer kinsman would take Ruth? What do you think? Epi? Uh, sir, was Boaz happy to take the root, sir, to take root? No. Was he hoping that the closer kinsman, the person who had first right of refusal, was he hoping that she would take Ruth? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, you think so? Okay. Yes, sir. Francis, what do you think? I think he is hoping to take Ruth from. I think he was okay. I I heard you say you think you was, you think he was hoping to have Ruth for himself. I think he is hoping for Ruth to. Okay. okay. Vanessa. Yes, sir, because um, she's beautiful, right? That's why she's... Um... So did, he, did he want the nearer kinsman to take her? No, he's, he protected her, sir. Okay. What do you think, Giselle? Uh, I think, sir, uh, other kinsmen are interested in uh, Ruth, but... Uh, uh, because Bo was uh, interested also in Ruth, that's why uh, maybe they want to respect uh, uh, Boas because uh, res uh, Boas is the, the redeemer. Okay. I don't think you understood the question. I, was Boaz hoping the nearer redeemer would take Ruth? <laughs> Yes, sir. Because uh, Bo was uh, uh, Ruth is beautiful, sir. That's why uh, the other kinsmen are interested in the other kinsman was interested uh, in the property, but when the wife came with the program, mm -hmm. he didn't want the property. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you think, uh, Rochelle? Think uh, Bo was. Uh... He he take care of Ruth. He did, but was he yeah. hoping that the nearer redeemer would take her? No. I think no. I think he wanted. I'm going to go with Fred here. I think he wanted the nearer redeemer to say no. I don't want it. Okay, cool. I'll take her. <laughs> uh, did God bless their marriage? Yes. yes. Yes, he did. And he yeah. gave them a son, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, what behavior by Boaz showed that he was a good boss, a good employer? Again, your you question, think, sir? What's that, Vanessa? Again, your question, sir? What actions, what behavior by Boaz showed that he was a good employer? Burley? I say because he is uh, generous and... Uh, Respectful man. Okay. They respect others. Sanessa? Uh, because uh, Boas is a business, like a businessman, a wealthy man. Uh, so what, he what actions? People. Go ahead. Yeah, being a generous to his servant, sir. Okay. Epi? Uh, sir. Uh, 
Boas si sa gentleman, kind and considerate. Okay. He What? puts fruit before his own. He puts fruit in it before his own. Okay. Francis? Yeah. Okay. Fred? What was the question? What actions showed that Boaz was a good employer? Oh, he was generous to his uh, servants and even to those who were uh, his non-servants. Okay. Why do you think Naomi wanted this to work out? Because she saw the benefits that would go to, to her. By well, being uh, supported, by being supported through you know a marriage, and finally have this, you know, support of a, you know, of a husband who was a kingsman, and so it aligned with, you know, her overall intention. Okay. How am I doing on time here? Oh, I'm over time. We got to answer one last question. And we we will have covered this. Um, what can we learn about God from Boaz? Epi? Ah, uh, sir, we have I know we have to be paid full. Okay, Marissa. Uh, sir, what is the question? What can we learn about God from what we've studied about Boaz? Um, from Boaz, sir, because he is a, a God fearing uh, man, he he did not uh, make other people hurt, sir. They love people. Uh, he loves people. Okay. He loves his servant. Uh, yes, sir. Francis. Uh, Boaz is faithful to God. Okay. Little Chris? Because Boaz is a faithful uh, to God, he did not make his servant do uh, hard work as so he helped them and become generous. So what can, what do we learn about God? Uh, being faithful, sir. God is Helpful faithful. To other. God Helpful is faithful. To that is true. Vanessa? Yeah. Be, yes, being faithful to God uh, has a blessed life. Okay. Rochelle? Um, uh, sir, um, being honest, in all things and humble at all times. Okay. Burley? Being, being faithful to God, sir. What can we learn about God from Boaz? Well, um, yes. What can the... Pass. Uh, sir, Pass. Uh, sir. Go ahead, Furley. He is a uh, God fearing. And... Boaz is God fearing. What can we learn about God? Can we learn? Okay. So, Nessa, you want to stab at it? Uh -huh. We have to rec recognize and appreciate God's presence in our daily lives. And uh, even it's Teams in uh, challenging situations. Okay. Guidance in our daily lives. All right. Giselle? Uh, 
God is always uh, giving us a protection and we have we have to follow his uh, rules commandments and be remain faithful to our God all right Fred God is um, blesses those who are uh, generous uh, even with with their wealth and possessions okay big Chris Everybody, let me stop the broadcast here. Yeah. <laughs> and stop.